again, everyone. I am back with yet another serious and eye-opening message. And the title or the subject or topic for this, this audio message is Doomsday Preppers, Wise or Foolish, Part 2, because I didn't get to finish the saying why I had to say the last time because of time constraints. And to be honest with you, you know, uh, with what's going on now, I just thought I'd, I would do a, you know, with the gas or oil shortages, oil crisis or gas shortages that we experience now because of that ransomware attack um, that was done by, you know, some foreign country, it said originating in Russia, but whatever, or the colonial pipeline or something. But anyways, that's why I tell, this why I said this, I think I told y'all if I haven't covered this already, I'm going to just say that I'm going to tell you what my late pastor told because he doesn't need this anymore. He, but, you know, he had, when God tells you something, you're supposed to obey. Okay, so he said, God so then said, always keep your gas tank full. Because, you know, with him, because he was in his 30s when, you know, those two gas crises, you know, oil crises or gas shortages took place back in the 70s. Because I didn't, what I didn't know was there was another one in 1979. The first one took place between, uh, I'm going to just say, late 73 and early 74. Between October 73 and January or February 74 to be exact. So, and around that time when that gas crisis got started, my mother had her first child, okay? And the second time <clears throat> it happened, it was shortly after my parents got married. This took place in the summer of... I think I'm guessing in summer of uh, 1979. That's why you always keep your gas tank full just in case, you know, incidents like that come up and, and also keep, you know, gasoline, you know, put away and stuff because, you because you know, when, when shortages come up, there's there's one thing that that I know, I can't speak for anybody else that I know of, you know, uh, uh, um, is that people are, are never prepared, okay, when hard times come and stuff, they're never prepared and then, they have to rush in at the last minute and panic buy and stuff. And not only is that, not only is that more stressful and stuff, you know, the, the people, others, because there's, there's going to be others, you know, buying for those resources too, competing for those resources. It's not going to be stressful, but you're going to have these other people. There's the the possibility of, you know, they're going to go in and panic buy. There ain't going to be none left for the others, you know, because the last time this took place in the 70s or two times it took place in the 70s, People were panic buying then. So that's why that's the importance for those of you that I don't have a motor vehicle, but for those of you that do, I just want to start this message off with this with this. Always keep your gas safe, even when times are good, okay? Always keep some stored away. Okay, because I got somebody that lives with me and she gave her grandson sixty dollars and the boy is a Ricky, he's a troublemaker. He he he's, he has a problem, just say he has ADHD and stuff. And, you know, his daddy is in jail because, you know, part of the reason he's there because he's a, I'm going to just say he's there, part of the reason he's there because, you know, he's a sex offender and also a thief, okay? He became addicted to pornography and he uh, he sexually, he brutally assaulted, you know, two two young, uh, two teenage white girls and, you know, he, I ain't going to get into that, but I have to get into details of that in another video, but, I mean, another message, audio message. I'm just say the boys like both of his parents. Both of his parents are mean and they quick tempered and stuff. And they, his daddy can put him in line, but he's per, he's in prison right now. But anyways, uh, he the boy come from a dysfunctional single parent home and all this kind of nonsense and stuff. And he he he's got a nasty mouth. He's he's sassy. He's rebellious. And yet this woman had rewarded him, you know, for his behavior. She was going to buy him some some Jordan tennis shoes for a hundred dollars and stuff. But she, she wanted to keep the peace, okay? And I told her, I said, we got bills to pay, okay? Why are you wasting your money like that and stuff? And if there's one thing that, that you know, I've learned is that people, you no know, more people are, aren't ever prepared. It's always like when things go back to normal, so-called, when things get settled in the case of what's been going on, you know, since this health crisis has begun, when, you know, when the dust settles on it, they, they drop their guard and stuff. And, and, and about this great reset thing, you know, I'm going to just put it like this, okay? When you keep having re recurrent dreams about shortages and things of that nature, you, you want to, and I've been having that maybe it's because it's been on my mind heavily, I don't know. But 
Maybe maybe God just be showing us those dreams to keep us vigilant and stuck, okay? Keep us awake and tell us that there's nothing guaranteed and stuck. And also to, you know, keep our, not only our physical house in order, but our spiritual house as well, okay? And she could have took that money. I said, I told her, I said, you could have took that money and filled your gas tank up with or bought a little something for yourself that you're giving it to some smart aleck boy that's, that's lying on you just because he's family and stuff, but it doesn't make him right, okay? You giving it to some idiot that you know that's you know how these young folks is they they're very foolish minded, okay? They they're just sending money and material things. That's why God is letting stuff get shaken up because he's tired of all the nonsense and stuff. He's tired of people following Hollywood and all their fantasies and Jennifer Lopez and and some fellow down in South Africa. They they told us straight it's told us straight out. He said we try to sell you a fantasy, okay? And why would you settle for that when you could just live in the real world? I know the real world isn't always pleasant. A lot of times it isn't. And over the past, I'm going to just say 14 months, things have gotten downright ugly down here. Okay. Okay. Why? Why? We, we, we don't have it. We don't have the time or the money or resources to be living in a fantasy world. Okay. We don't have the time or the money or the resources, like I said, like I just said, to be living in a fantasy world. I mean, y'all need to shut off the idiot box. Because they ain't gonna do because it's owned by Satan. Okay, like just to roll off said, please watch that message. Uh, uh television enemy of righteousness, okay? Because please and other things related to television that he spoke out against, okay? Because they're just gonna tell you that it's okay to do as thou wilt. They they just gonna spouse, you know, all these satanic new world order antichrist philosophies, basically. And television's not there to, this isn't my subject for this message, but I just thought I'd let y'all know television isn't the purpose of television is to amuse you or make you happy is to take your minds off of important realities and get you sent, destroy your life and get you sent to hell and keep you in spiritual darkness. Okay. Because it's gotten even worse in recent years, but back to the doomsday prepping, I read a, uh, an article on rapture ready. Of course I had to get the way back machine because it's bad news. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, we've been getting here with bad news and some of it's true and, uh, and others of it. It's just false and sensationalized and meant to, you know, to scare you and put you in fear and anxiety and stuff. Okay, because Satan's going to take full advantage of that. And even, I find even God's people, you know, they don't have a optimistic outview, especially b believers over here in the West, okay, who are used to having it real good and stuff. And it's, I guess maybe God's trying to tell us that we can only depend on, we should depend on man, we should depend on him. Okay, I know, th I know the circumstances aren't the best and stuff. But the Bible says we are promised trouble in this life. I'm not saying you should like it because I don't myself, okay? Be honest, nobody likes going through hard times, but it's just a fact of life. And this earth is going through birth pains and stuff. And as you very well know, especially ladies out here that's already giving birth to babies and stuff, you know as well as I do that the closer, you know, it gets to the birth of that baby, the birth pains or the birth pains, they get... They increase in intensity and frequency. In other words, they get stronger and closer together, okay? Until the baby is finally born. And that's what this earth is going through right now with these, you know, shortages and stuff that we've been having over the past year and some change. And it's like when dust settled, people just started, you know, falling back asleep again. But God letting this stuff happen and getting stuff shaken up telling they, in order to tell us that we need to depend on him. Okay, the world is not our source. The government is not our source because they're not for us. They don't care about our safety at all. They just only care about putting this new world order in place, building this back tower of Babel and stuff, which is also called the new world order, reset and the new reset and all this nonsense and just enslaving us in process and making our lives as miserable and, you know, restrictive as possible. Okay, but anyhow, back to the article. Somebody posted on Rapture Ready, they had a, a problem with, because, you know, they had well water and they lived out, probably one of those old houses out in the country, and they had well water and a certain mechanism in there broke and stuff. So they decided to go to the store and buy all this water and stuff. But luckily, God was grace, gracious, and, you know, uh, the following day, I think a day or two later, I think it was the following day, somebody, they got somebody out there to fix the thing, and they didn't really need the water after all. But... The worst thing you do is just consume what y'all store up and stuff, okay? Don't get, but don't get too hung up on this prepper doomsday thing because at the end of the day, we need to prepare for eternity. We're not going to be down here forever. And I know it's hard and I know things are not going to get no better down here, but we need to keep our eyes on Jesus and stuff and not on our problems. And I mean, God knows what's best and 
he's sending this stuff to, you know, the, the wake us up because too many of us believers, you know, here, especially here in the West where we have it better and stuff. We have more religious freedom for the time being, of course. We have more religious freedom. And in other nations and stuff, they don't have it. So where they have, they have to constantly deal with harassment by their peers and harassment, you know, by the government and stuff, stalking, bullying and harassment and even imprisonment and, and torture and death. OK, uh, for their faith. OK, and it's mainly in countries where, you know, they're communistic or predominantly Muslim. I mean, most I mean, that's most make up most of the countries that, you know, that, they're, that you know, hostile towards believers and towards the, you know, the true church. You know the bride or the body of Jesus Christ, okay? And I don't know how it's bad it's gonna get for them, but I know it's not gonna get no better for us, okay? I do know that it's gonna. Uh, but back to today, my subject. I make. I have to make another. I have to talk discuss this in a uh, 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 a later message or something about doomsday prep. And then this it's called this this fellow. This is an elderly gentleman with a long beard called the door, and he means well. But you know, I thought. My goodness, if you really had the Lord, I mean, you would clean up a little bit. You wouldn't look like something that crawled from under a rock or something. He tried to take the, the parable of the ten virgins and try to apply it to, you know, kind of like the prepper situation and stuff. And as I look around and I see, I see that's all some folks are doing. That's all they focused on. But what I meant, the point I, what, that I meant to get to was, what good would that do you if, you know, you missed heaven? You, if you had plenty of food stocked up, you were just prepared for anything. But if you missed heaven or something or something else came up unexpected that, you know, you weren't expecting and, you know, it caught you by surprise. And a lot of times life, because I'm speaking from personal experience, a lot of times life, you know, throws you curveballs. And what's happening now with, you know, the oil crisis or the gas shortage that he's saying that, you know, it's going to end soon. But I'm just not seeing it right now because this roommate that I had that moved in, you, you know, when she came in the house uh, late last week, she said there was a gas shortage. She just mentioned it and she had to get gas in her car i thought i thought maybe you know she i was kind of in denial and i thought maybe it meant that you know uh, uh her, she has two vehicles i thought she needed to fill one up and she said it, and she said so and or she need to put some something in it but it, it, she really meant it. it was true okay and y'all should you know keep your house stock i mean keep your physical house in order keep your house clean don't accumulate a lot of junk and don't try to live in luxury or anything because if you know you're going in a rapture, I mean, this is this is to believers, true believers, the body or the bride of Jesus Christ, those that are going in the rapture. This is important. This is a message. This isn't a message to the world. I mean, it's politically incorrect in a religious sense that it is. I'm not talking to people out in the world because most of them are not real. Number one, and secondly, there's a lot of that the ones that are real, a lot of the ones that are real, they they're not chosen to follow God. They're serpent seed. Okay, they ain't gonna never, you know have a new birth because there's no seed in them, seed of God in them. I mean, they're, they're the seed of the serpent. So they're going to be left down here for the tribulation period. They definitely going to need to make those preparations. They, they definitely need to make those arrangements. I don't understand trolls that get online and try to debate with people about, with, about whether the rapture is going to take place before the tribulation, in the middle of the tribulation, or near the end or whatever. Because it's like that Native American pastor, and beside, uh, his name is... Uh, Walter Benjamin and Walter B. Shepard, by the way, uh, up in Canada. Y'all might want to check out his videos, even though he ain't really posted any in a couple. It's been a little over two years since he posted anything. It's very interesting. It talks about last days and end times and what to expect doing, you know, for the tribulation period and stuff. For those of y'all that are out there listening, let's, let's get around debating, going around debating and debating and going back and forth and back and forth and arguing and arguing with people about, you know, the timeline of the rapture. If you don't believe or have enough faith that, that you're going in a rapture, have enough faith in God that, you you know, you need, you need to just make arrangements. And I'm still on the subject, but I'm making a point. You need to make arrangements. And starting now, now would be a good time if you haven't gotten started already to live off the grid. If you have plans on resisting the Antichrist and the mark of the beast, that stuff will be rolled out after the church leaves here. And like it or not, the rapture is going to happen. And on top of that, it's going to happen before the tribulation period arrives. OK, so you can you can argue, debate and go back and forth with people all day and all night or, or whatever. And I know some of y'all get paid to cause trouble and stir up this kind of trouble and stuff and stalk and harass and bully people over the Internet. But it's not going to change the facts. OK, 
I mean, like it or not, the rapture is going, it's not going to happen. The ones that's saying that there's no such thing as a rapture, they don't fly anymore, just like they literally white Jesus. So they, they, they don't revert it to saying, oh, he's Middle Eastern. So you're basically saying he's a dark skinned white man now. Because uh, I know of a man that looks like that and he's white, okay? Yeah, I mean, he's actually Italian, but he kind of looks like a Jew, okay? And he's he has an olive complexion and stuff, but he's white, okay? But anyways, I just thought I'd throw that in. And secondly, they can't, with all the events that's going on, how things been shaking up over the past years of change, I'm going to just say years of change, the past uh, 14 months and stuff, people are waking up and taking notice that, hey, it looks like this rapture thing is something to this rapture thing after all. So the trolls are reverted and the shields and the agents and, and they're probably paid by the government anyways to, you know, destroy your faith in God and stuff and tell you that God will leave us down here for that time. But biblically, that's impossible. And by the way, y'all need to, you know, look at that video. I had to leave the link in the description about proof that, of course, I didn't post it too long ago or anything, but I'll give some, some proofs that, you know, the, the, that the tribulation is going to take place before the rap, before the, the I'm, I'm sorry, the rapture will take the place before the tribulation period does, because as believers, we got enough challenges ahead of us with, the, you know, them taking away our freedoms and stuff and putting a squeeze down on, and clamping down on us and stuff. We have enough challenges ahead of us without, you know, you know, trolls telling us that Christ ain't going to come back and stuff and get us, that, that he going to leave us. Of course, I know what the dealio is because they're just jealous that they're not going and stuff and they're trying to make it look like, they're going to leave, God will leave his people there for us, for the Antichrist, and for them to do what they want to do to us. But anyways, about back to doomsday prepping and stuff, I mean, it's wise, especially if you if you live out in the country and stuff, you live uh, out in a rural area, and, and especially if you live in an area that's prone to disasters like hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, or whatever, and you don't know what's going to happen, it'd be wise to stock up so that you don't have to panic buy or go in stores and stuff and compete with the rest of the population basically in your area for the resource the other you know tens or, or thousands or hundreds of thousands maybe uh, even a mi millions of people in the supermarkets and stuff okay so you won't be stressed out or anything like that you're already prepared for for battle and stuff you geared up and you're ready to go okay uh just just always stay stocked up no matter how things look you know, things settle down okay because you know if if, if there's one thing that that's true for life, not just me, but anybody in life. I mean, disasters can strike at any time, okay, without any warning, okay? One minute your world is peaceful and the waters are calm. Next minute there's a, a turbulent storm and stuff that, you know, turns turns the world, turns your world either individually or nationally or whatever on its head, okay? So you want to compete with others and you won't be stressed out and all this kind of nonsense. And you have to, and you, you don't know when, it, when that stuff runs out, you don't know when it's going to be back in on top of that, okay? And it's like my late pastor said, if you know what's coming, you're supposed to make preparations for it. You don't wait till the last minute or wait till, you know, disaster strikes aside that you're going to, you know, make all of a sudden make preparation. It could be too late. OK, I mean, God might help you out in, in some cases, but it's not. You just let you hang. So you learn your lesson. But most of all, spiritually. OK, uh, if anything. Yeah, I don't I don't like the fact that, you know, they come. They're going to come down on us, really come down on us one of these days. But. The truth of the matter is, I really feel sorry for those that that don't have Jesus, okay? They don't know the Lord, don't have a personal relationship with him because they really going to get it. Because like I, I foretold uh, a few years back that, that you know, the Illuminati, the powers that be, they're not going to just make it hard for believers. They're going to make it hard for everybody in general because Satan knows his time is just about up. But if there's no further ado, I'm out. Peace. Shalom.